Hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today, I'm going to take you through a little bit, uh, just a simple idea with some 3-3 stack stuff with the coverage behind it to kind of uh, try and blend it in or to make it easy uh, to fit into your defense. If you are a 3-3 stack team, I think you could use it. If you're a team, maybe that's a 4-2-5 team like we've been the last couple of years that likes to mix in some 3-3 stack looks, but try and keep the box um, and the run fits as similar as possible. Uh, then I think this is something you may be able to do. And the reason for that is we're going to play a coverage behind it that we play with our 4-2-5 stuff. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to play that coverage and tie it in with the movement so that if the movement has to change from one side to the other, we don't necessarily have to change the coverage behind it. We've looked at, um, or I've looked at, at our school, uh, I've looked at, becoming possibly a 3-3 stack team as a base defense because it fits our personnel. The thing that bothers me about it is the run fits and making the run fits as uh, same as possible as the 4-2-5 because I don't want to get into the 3-3 and move every different direction and we're not a single high 3-deep uh, team at current moment. We don't play Ripley's match. We do play some man free but we're not a one high structure. We're a two high structure. And a lot of times in 3-3 stack stuff with split field coverage, when you move the front and send a fourth rusher, you've got to tie your coverages in real tight with that, and then you end up with multiple responsibilities for your stack linebackers because one time they might be in the movement and part of the fourth rusher, and then depending on which way the strength is, if it's a 10 personnel set, they might be on the trip side, they might be away from it, they might be uh, a, a palms dropper as opposed to a three dropper, um, and I think you just end up having to build in more rules in some of your pass coverage stuff and make sure that you tie all those things together so that your coverages end up matching the movement. Because like I said, a lot of times when you see 3-3 three, three stack teams that add a fourth rusher and move the front, a lot of those teams are single high and, and they're three deep or rip list match or they're one free. We're a quarters team behind it, so we've got to tie the movements in um, and make them a little bit easier for us to tie the coverages in with the movements. So I'm going to show you one of the ways we do that. And uh, it's a coverage that a lot of people play. It's a coverage that we call robber, even though, you know, I, I call it robber at all the schools I've been at because I learned it 25 years ago. And it was the robber coverage that Mickey Andrews was playing at Florida State and that Nebraska was playing in the late 80s or mid 80s, early 90s. And it was, they called it 11 robber. Mickey Andrews calls it regular robber. And what it is, it's a man under scheme with a low hole rat. And a, and a high hole post player. So we call it robber. Some people call it 11 robber. You know, it's not your traditional robber quarters coverage that most people are used to seeing. There's two different versions, in my opinion, of robber that are out there. There's old Virginia Tech eight man front robber where the free safety is a robber on two, but the corners are more half players. And then you have a quarters concept where a free safety is truly playing a robber role, but your corners are like your Michigan State type Pat Narduzzi quarter stuff where your corners are press man or they're man on all of one except shallow. They're not deep half players. It's more of a quarter system. And I know there's a lot of people out there that call quarters and robber the same thing. I think of robber as an eight-man front corners as crazy half players. When I think about that robber coverage, I think of quarters in a little bit different um, light where the, the safety is a quarters coverage robber player, but we're going to play man coverage with our corners. And then the actual robber that I call in my coverages is a, um, a one rat or a, you know, a low hole, high hole rat deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie that all together in a 3-3 stack. So if we were playing a tight end team, because this is a man concept, what we would do is we would send the fourth rusher from the tight end side. All right, so what would end up happening is I would vice the tight end with my, with my strong safety or my left safety because he has number two man to man and that tight end in a pro set is number two. So I'm going to vice that, that safety on number two and then I'm going to send the front away, all right, away from the side of the fourth rusher so that my stack, my left stack, which right now I have drawn up as the Sam, he's going to become the fourth rusher off the edge and I'm going to send the front away from that. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to end up in an over front look with a vice on the tight end. And this is actually the traditional way in the old school Florida State, Mickey Andrews would play jet robber. This was his jet robber 
from a 4-3, they would play with, a, with an A-shader, a 1, and a 5, and then they would play with a 3, a vice man player that's more of a C-gap run player, but he's a man player on a tight end. And now their defensive end, which is our stack backer, would come from a wide nine when they had those real athletic 4-3 defensive ends back in the late 80s, early 90s. And that guy would be a wide nine coming off the edge, and he would be more of a box player, and they would just let him rip deep in the backfield and not worry about spilling, and they would try and box everything back to the man players because what you ended up having was you had man-to-man -man on one, man-to-man -man on two, man-to-man -man on one, and then the mic and the will would bracket the backs, and then in a two-back pro world, they would tie that in with, this, with their man player on a tight end so that if the tight end blocked down or released inside, all right, the mic would pick up that route, and then the safety would take the first back coming out. So when you had like play action power pass or, you know, when you had a fullback and a flat and a tight end either inside or vertical, all right, you, you'd be able to pass those routes off to each other. So it was really a three-man bracket versus two-back stuff, all right, but for right now, for argument's sake, we're going to say that we're locked on a tight end and Mike and Will bracket the two-backs. And then what happens is you have two safeties back here that are playing robber concepts, all right, and when I say that, what I mean is they are hard run players, okay, and they are extra in the run game. They're going to give us nine guys versus the run against a 21 personnel team. They are not playing what you would think of traditional robber rules because they're not going to play too vertical. What they're going to do versus the run game, all right, they're going to come down, and if it's flow at them, they're going to come down and fit where needed, all right, and then the backside guy would try and fit behind the linebackers playing man-to-man -man, just like a quarter steer. All right, so if the run went at the safety this side, then the safety would fit, all right, the wheel would fit and try and box it back to the mic, all right, and then this safety would play like a quarters concept behind it. So you get nine guys on the run. Where the difference is, is in the passing game, what's going to end up happening is if you get pass, you are going to take this safety and you're going to pull them down to be a low hole rat. You're going to take this safety and you're going to pull them to where you're going to have a low player and a high player with a man coverage. So now you have help versus mesh shallow cross inside routes. You have post help deep down the middle of the field. You have nine guys on the run. You're playing man coverage. So in a 3-3 stack world, for us, when we used to bounce back and forth between 4-2-5 and 3-3 stack, this is a real easy way for us to tie a movement and a fourth rusher in without having to make sure we tie all our coverages in the right way all right, together, because when you get to one back stuff, and you can game plan this however you want, but when you get to one back, what's going to happen is one of your safeties is going to be the adjuster, and they're going to end up playing man to man. So what's going to happen versus one back is it's probably going to look more like a man free coverage, but versus one back, what's going to happen is now your safeties, which for me, they could be left and right safety. For some people, they're strong safety, weak safety. But now what's going to happen is your left and right safety, your left and right dog, your strong and free safety, they're going to end up playing man-to-man -man on the speed receivers because you don't want your Mike and Will out there on speed receivers. Okay? So now what you've got to do within your game plan is you've got to figure out which way do you want to send the front, where do you want to send the fourth rusher from if it's one back. So... Do you want to send them from the side of the back, which would essentially give you the three technique on the back side of any inside zone play? So if I sent the wheel off the edge and move the front this way, and I sent the wheel, that would give me essentially the three technique on the back side of the zone. And then what we can do with our man players, all right, you've got two different choices here, depending on how aggressive or how simple you want to be. What you can do with your man players that are bracketing is if you get any, if you kind of, cross key it, or you get any flow across the face here, and let's say the Sam has to fit as a man player, I can take the mic from the backside, okay, and I can do two things, all right? I can play the will rusher high through the mesh point as a quarterback player, and I can fit the mic in the backside A gap, or, all right, I can take the will mesh charge and have the mic go over the top to play the quarterback, or, I could get real aggressive with the free safety, who is a high hole player in pass, but he could be a kill zone player in a run game. And now you can get one back runs to where both backers fit open gaps in the box, and you take the free safety, 
and you play him to the alley on both sides, and you can actually play him as a QB kill player. All right, as a kill zone player. So you've got some different options depending on how you want to play zone read or quarterback runs because you've got a fourth rusher coming, you've got man to man on the outside, and then your low hole, high hole is going to come. That's going to be your high player versus pass. All right, and then for argument's sake, in the passing game, if the back, let's say, push this way, your Mike linebacker would end up being a man player on the back, and your Sam linebacker or your other stack backer would be the low hole rat player. Okay? So now you've got yourself in a situation where if you get one back, you can scheme it however you want. You can it's almost blitz the formation, even though you're only sending a fourth rusher and you're not blitzing, but you can send them from the side that the back is on and then determine how you want to play. If you want the three technique on the back side of the zone, but you don't like the will with the three technique chasing the dive, then you can play them high on the quarterback, and both your inside backers can fit the inside run. Okay? If you wanted to get a little bit more aggressive or a different look for the zone read stuff, and you wanted to play it as more of a crash deal, you could send the pressure away from the back. All right? So you could send the pressure away from the back, so now you can take this stack backer up, send them away from the back, and now the three technique is on the other side, which leaves you the open B gap here to now possibly chase the dive play, sit him high however you want to do it, and then based on how you're going to play the option or the zone read game, now you get this flow, makes him a man player fitting in that A gap, if you're going to chase the dive, you can take the low hole rat player and make him the quarterback, okay? Or you can take the low hole rat player and aggressively play him through the back half of the running back and take the kill zone player to play on the quarterback. So you have multiple options of how you want to do it, all right, based on one back or two back. If it's one back, you're going to end up with inside backers bracketing the back, and they're going to end up being a low hole player, and your free safety would be the high hole player. If it's two back, you'll always have your two safeties as the low hole, high hole, all right, robber players. They'll be eight and nine in the run game, and they'll be the low hole, high hole spin. So, for argument's sake, going back to two back, if you had what we see a lot of now, 20 personnel, all right, so if you had 20 personnel in the game, all right, and you can, again, you can game plan it however you want, where you want to send the fourth rusher from. All right, but what would end up happening is now that it's two back, your safeties, these are going to be the extra and what we call robber players. And again, don't confuse that term with what you know of as traditional robber. This is how we play it, and this is what we call the extra robber players. So now you're going to be man on one, man on two, okay, for argument's sake, right, let, right now, let's send it from the side of the sniffer. So let's bring him up to come to bring the front to where we get back to that over front with the three technique to the sniffer. Now what you're going to end up having is your mic and your will are bracket on the backs man to man. Some people call it green dog, bracket. These two have these two man to man. And now here is your extra and then extra in the run game. And then in the passing game, this becomes your low hole that becomes your high hole. All right. So to get into a 3-3 stack world, if you want to give that look and you want to give the illusion of a different front and you want to send guys from a stack look and you want to make it more difficult on the offensive line, one of the ways you can do that with, a, to me, a very simplistic coverage behind it is a low hole, high hole rat all right, that you can play man to man. It's easy for the kids on the outside that are playing man. You don't have to tie it into your two read or quarters coverage concepts. It breaks down, the corners have one, safeties have two. If it's two back, then the safeties are the robber player. Free safety will always be the robber high hole player. So he'll always be an extra hat on the run and a high hole player in the pass game. So it gives you extra players in the run game. You can, whether it's zone read or option, it gives you ways that you can get the extra players to fit the zone read in a different way, depending on how aggressively or how different you want to be. All right. And then in the passing game, it gives you a low hole rat for any shallow crosses, mesh, drive, any of those type routes and man-to-man -man coverage that are going to give you fits. Because remember, if you get mesh type stuff, you're going to get rubs and picks and you're playing man. 
So now it gives us a red. It gives us a low hole red on screens that can play screens if linemen get out. And then with all the agile quarterbacks that we're getting that can extend plays, it gives us a low hole red that's an extra guy on that quarterback. So it ends up becoming almost like a spy concept. Okay, so it's a very simple coverage to play if you have guys that can play man. All right, it ties in well with the run game to get extra players into the run game. I think it's a good pass defense to be aggressive and play man with a low hole and high hole player. So you have post hole, you have post safety help. Then you also have inside help on, on shallows and digs and everything else. You're going to be susceptible to some man coverages, so outside rubs and picks, whips and pivots and different things to, to take advantage of man coverage. You're not sending five or six, so it's not as aggressive as a rush, but you're changing the look of your defense, all right, and you are changing how you add the fourth rusher and where you add them from based on your game plan, all right, and for us, what I'm going to try and do is if we do become a static 3-3 stack team, our base defense would be not sending a fourth rusher. So our base defense, for argument's sake, against this look right here, all right, our base defense would be six-man box playing our palms coverage or two read on this side, and then on this side, the away side to the single now is when you get into sky or cloud, all right, or you can play cut coverages, or you can play what we call hawk, which is man with safety help. But now in the base, we're going to play the, the, the box with these six, very similar to a 4-2-5, and now we're going to play our base coverage behind it. As soon as we go to adding in a fourth rusher, by going to the low hole, high hole rat, what I call robber concept, it makes it real easy for us to send a rusher from either, either side and not worry about how that ties in all right, to the coverages and not worrying about, for argument's sake, if I sent the front this way and I sent the Sam, that's going to make the Mike, the three vertical player, the Will on the backside would tie into the cut coverages. If I sent the front the other way and sent the Will, now the Sam is the three vertical play and player and the Mike is tied to the weak side cut coverages. So I don't know if I want the Mike tied to the front side coverages and the back side. So when I want to add a fourth rusher, if I go with what I call robber, low hole, high hole, rat, all right, one rat, uh, you know, a lot of different terminology out there. This is real easy for me to add the fourth rusher from wherever I want, and then all I got to do with the backers is they're man players versus two back. One back, they're going to become bracket man, low hole players, so I don't have to worry about rotating them to the strong side or the weak side of the coverage, so it makes it easy for us. The way we jump back and forth sometimes from 4-2-5 to 3-3 stack, it makes it an easy way to send a fourth change the look for the O-line, but play a coverage behind it that I know my guys can play in some fast, simple fashion without having to manipulate whether they're to the strong side or the weak side. Okay, so that's a look at some 3-3, adding a fourth rusher, playing what I call robber coverage at Orange Park High School or anywhere I've been, it's been robber, but uh, what other people might call one rat or, or one lurk, or there's a million names out there for it, but it's man underneath, all right, extra players on the run. Low hole, if it becomes pass, you have a low hole cut player, a low hole rat player, and you have a high hole post player. All right, so if you can add this coverage to your defense, whether you're 3-4, 4-3, three, 3-3 four, four, three, three, three stack, if you can add this coverage as a wrinkle to your defense, I think it'll help you out. You can uh, be multiple and different with how you play zone read and option stuff, and I think it'll help you a little bit in the passing game as well. All right, as always, guys, none of these things work unless your kids can do them and do them well. And you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.